everyone, my name is Josh and welcome to Whims. And today I've got a video for you on a new series that I'm going to be doing called Alternative Options. And what this basically is, is if you have a popular TV show or a popular film that's out there that's getting a lot of attention and a lot of love, I will be offering an interesting alternative, sort of like an alternative to that particular piece. Like my last video that I did on this was on the TV show The Boys, the Amazon Prime original series. And I thought this show is getting rather popular. I want to show a more, or I want to talk about an alternative to it, which was, you know, the Zack Snyder film adaptation of the graphic novel Watchmen. And particularly the character of Dr. Manhattan and how he seems to have a rather similar um character to the Frankenstein's monster sort of like a combination of Superman and Frankenstein's monster if they meshed in the sense that there's more depth to them than what meets the eye and um, in this particular case I'm going to be talking about two films um The Descent which came out in 2005 and it's sort of like a claustrophobic thriller following a group of friends who go spelunking into the deep caves of this American wilderness and they encounter some rather unsavoury creatures that look really humanoid known as crawlers. Now in that film um, it mostly is a story about a lot of themes of motherhood, um, things like um, losing love and grief and can you trust your friends in these very dire circumstances and what will push you to make some of the most difficult decisions imaginable in order to either save your own skin or save the skin of someone that you love and that's effectively what it means that they're all they're all themes that tie into what makes us a human being and this is almost carried over from the idea of the way the monsters look in that film in, in the film the descent they look almost like they're human they look very humanoid in the sense that they look that they, they have, you know, a very standard, you know, human anatomy in regards to the fact that they, you know, have legs, they have two upright legs, they um, crawl around everywhere, they have mouths, they have eyes, they look bat-like and they can't see, but they can hear a lot, that like their hearing is very distinctive, they're very, they're very powerful hearing, and they can adapt perfectly to being in the dark. So the, the whole entire theme of humanity and what it means to be human is a very strong theme throughout the course of the descent. And that's why I love it. I think it's a masterpiece. It's probably one of my favourite horror films ever in regards to how it approaches these themes. And I really do like the fact that we have a horror film that's mostly, you know, an all a, a cast mostly made up of women and these very talented actresses who sadly most of them haven't gone on to do other things and it's actually a real shame because they're all really talented in this film and it's an amazing horror film and it was directed by Neil Marshall who previously directed Dog Soldiers which was an all-male cast film and it kind of almost has a little bit of a callback to the thing in the sense that it is basically a horror film where it's all one gender all people of one gender sort of trapped in this one location and having to fight off an otherworldly evil Whereas in the case of The Descent, it's a very all-too-familiar evil, which is your fellow human, and that theme's almost bled into with The Descent as well. So there's a lot of other interesting themes there in regards to humanity and what it means to be human. But the other film I want to talk about is a film called Dead Deathline, which came out in 1972, and it stars Donald Pleasance as a detective called Detective Calhoun, who is a... He's quite a, a quirky detective, and he is given this case by these two teenagers, this couple, this sort of university couple, who find a man who passed out on these steps whilst they're coming home from the London Underground one day. And one of them says, we should go and get help. Um, the girlfriend is saying, you know, we should get help. We should help somebody. He could be dying or he could be, you know, homeless. And her boyfriend, who happens to be American, just says, oh, we could be a bum. We have tons of bums in New York every day. And um, she goes, well, we can't just leave him here. We need to go and get help. So they go to this officer up above ground and they say, well, there's someone down there collapsed on the steps and we need to get help. We're very worried. So he says, OK, show me. And they go back to the scene of the crime where this man's collapsed on the steps and he's just disappeared. And that's where the entirety of this film kind of becomes the main bulk, I think, because this film... I'm going to stop there in regards to exploring the plot because this film is a film that needs to be seen cold. And if you want to check out this film for yourself, Deathline, or as it's referred to by its American title, 
um, raw meat. You can um, find it on an Amazon Prime prescription. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can watch it via there. Or as of this recording, it's on YouTube completely for free. And it's an amazing film. I'd highly recommend it. I watched it last night. And it's just incredibly enthralling. And what this film basically talks about in regards to it having very similar themes to humanity is if you don't want to be spoiled by this film, I would recommend clicking off at right about now so you don't want to be spoiled by the film Death Line of 1972 or Raw Meat, depending on where you are. But if you don't want to be spoiled, please click off right about now if you don't want to be spoiled about this film, if you haven't seen it, um, because I will be going to spoilers. So I'll give you guys a minute. Okay, so the official outcome of this film is that it's told half... The, the, the film is split into two halves. The first half is it's a detective story told from the point of view of Donald Pleasance is um, Detective Calhoun, in, in, Detective Inspector Calhoun, who's very funny, he's very quirky, but he's also the type of guy who likes his own comforts like he loves his cups of tea and everything like that but he is a very good detective he has a very sharp very um observant mind in regards to how he approaches his police work but he's been given this very bizarre case and he starts investigating but he's also doing other slice of life things like going down the pub and um just basically you know having a drink every once in a while but then there's this other story that's going on whilst he's investigating these crimes of someone or maybe perhaps it's not just one person, maybe it's a group of people who are down in these tunnels killing people and eating them and abducting them and eating them. And that's quite horrific. In fact, there's this entire long shot where you see the the villain's lair and it's just sort of panning. It's almost like a horror film version of the desk scene in Who Framed Roger Rabbit where you're sort of panning through Eddie Valiant's... Um, items his his momentous items or his mementos of, of all the things that he's been doing while he's been having his career as a detective and it shows you from the beginning of his career all the way to the time when he was really truly happy and he's his, his partner dies his he loses his, his love of his life they break up then their relationship and it's just the way he is it's almost like a horror film version of that where it tells you a visual story as you're panning through his lair. Like you're seeing not only the, the victims that he's killed, the horrible state in which he's murdered all these victims. Like there's even a severed arm on a table at one point. There's a, there's a decapitated head of a woman with her eyes bitten out. There's a scene where there's, there's actually a, a, a dead body of a guy's face where it's mostly just a skeleton and there's like bits of flesh and viscera still clinging and, hair like clinging to his head at some points it's very horrific imagery it really is horrific and it really is awful but you're also having this accompanied by the sound of a dripping pipe and the sounds of vermin and rats sort of scurrying along and squeaking as you usually do and it's such a horrific sight but then you pan through all these other shots these very long shots where you see the tunnels and you see the um you see the tunnels, you see how dark it is, but then you see little splashes of light here and there. And then you see um, these entire bunk beds, like these rows and rows and rows of bunk beds of previous generations of these cannibalistic individuals who've basically been living in these tunnels after they were trapped. And it's so atmospheric, it's so chilling, but it's bloody beautiful. I found myself going, wow, I did not expect this kind of um, level of perfect visual storytelling told um in such a way and I, and I do deliberately call it almost like a horror version of the who framed Roger rabbit shot where it is kind of like showing all these mementos because it is visual storytelling and it's good visual storytelling and i do eventually at one point want to do a review for who framed Roger rabbit at one stage but for now we're, we're stuck to the horror <laughs> we're sticking to the horror film version of that scene but yeah it's so perfect so well done and it really is quite compelling and even the main character of the man is such a compelling um, character because he isn't just a horrible cannibalistic creature who is unbelievably evil. He is someone who is genuinely um, sympathetic, he's genuinely empathetic. The way he behaves with his fellow um, 
cannibals is absolutely compelling and really kind of heartfelt in places so that when the last of his kind the second to last of his kind dies and he's just sort of left on his own you really do feel the weight of that and you really do even though you've only known him for five seconds you do feel this degree of attachment to this character and you really do feel like oh my god you do feel sorry for him and it is genuinely very well done and it really is powerful in many ways and Let's just say he has a catchphrase, which is quite terrifying. It's quite a casual phrase. He says at one point during the film, in order to communicate with someone, he says the words, mind the doors. And he says it in such a very broken way where it's like, never before has an actor, the actor who plays um, the man in this film is called Hugh... Um, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> I've completely drawn it blank. But the actor who plays him um, does an absolutely wonderful job of both conveying the terror of that phrase, like the way he says the words, mind the doors. It's so terrifying. But he can also do it in a way where you are also kind of feeling very sad for him. Like that's the only word he knows. That's the only phrase he knows throughout all the things that he's heard people say throughout the years in which he's been coming back and forth from the underground and going back up to the surface and getting victims. He's only heard that phrase, like, like mind the doors, and that's all he's said. But it's so chilling. It, it does this very wonderful thing where you don't know whether to be frightened or to be genuinely sad for this guy or feel like he's kind of a bit pathetic in a way with the way he sort of acts and the way he behaves. But it is sad and it really does make you think, oh, I actually do feel really sorry for this guy. And it really is well done. It's very well acted. It's very well performed. And I think um, Siri Jones, who wrote the screenplay, along with the director, um, Gary... Um, I'm drawing a blank on these names. Gary Sherman um, did such an incredible job. And Gary Sherman is a American director, and he directed a film in Britain that I thought was very compelling, really, that he wanted to do an entire film about the London Underground and its history and sort of like the the dark atmospheric corners of this London underground. And it really is quite compelling. I almost want to call this the, uh, the um, if you like the film Creep, the 2004 film Creep, watch this video. But I feel like because The Descent is much more of a popular title and more people would know about that film um, in regards to its claustrophobia and its themes about what it means to be human and, and the scary things that we have to do as human beings in order to stay alive and to stay sane is such an incredibly compelling element of both the descent and this film and in in regards to um in regards to death line or raw meat it is basically what are you willing to do to stay alive and to keep your um to keep your bloodline going and in many ways to the man it's basically about finding a companion and breeding with them to make a next generation of these cannibals and that's quite a horrific idea but then that's also a thing that i think most of us would do if we were on the verge of extinction we would do you know sort of unthinkable things in order to survive and it's such a compelling um piece of storytelling in that regard but it is also just really great and atmospheric. It definitely does breathe that kind of classical 70s sleaze in regards to the opening, the opening sequence of this entire film. It gives you this impression that you're almost going to watch a British version of Taxi Driver with the way it kind of, it kind of has this very kind of otherworldly... Um, it's almost like the drums are kind of almost electronic. Like they have these very electronic kind of drums or this very electronic bass kind of going do 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 And then they have these violins that have this very kind of sleazy sound. And it really does give you this impression that you're almost going to watch this very sleazy kind of film. But in many ways, it almost has a lot in common with the universal, the classic universal monster films, like your Frankenstein, your Draculas and your Wolfman, in how it originally is presented. But what a curveball it throws you, because you're thinking to yourself, oh, if you're going to watch this very kind of sleazy 70s British horror film. But in many ways, it is also quite, you know, dark. It is gothic in many ways as well. But it is very compelling. And I really do like this film. I really would highly recommend it. And if you want to check out this film for yourself, I would highly recommend checking it out on YouTube. You can watch it for completely free as of this recording 
on YouTube. Um, just type in um, Deathline 1972, full film or Deathline 1972, and you should get the full film on there. And if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you should be able to get it from there as well. So there's so many other ways, but the, but those are the two that I can think of just off the, off the top of my head. But please, um, rec please watch this film. It's fantastic. It's a really atmospheric, very gruesome horror movie. And it's very well done. It's very well cast. It's very well written. The scenes with the man alone are worth the price of admission for me because I feel like his scenes are really compelling and they really do make you feel like they really are putting a lot of effort into those scenes in particular to reflesh out the scene of what it, the themes of what it means to be human. And it's so well done. So I hope you guys have actually, you know, enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, I hope, hope you're all having a very good day. And let me know what you want me to tackle next for um, this um, alternative options um, series. Um, let me know in the comments what other films or TV shows you'd like me to find comparisons for um, on my YouTube channel or on my community page. And if you want me to do more um, alternative opinion videos, please let me know on my community page or down in the comments of this video. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're having a very good day. This has been Joshua Wims and take care. Bye for now.